wait a minute, we could use pomegranate to support with blood pressure. We could use turmeric to prevent Alzheimer's disease. We could use things like ginkgo biloba or go to cola to in, improve memory and cognitive function and circulation. You could use juniper berry for the kidney and how these herbs can actually be used. And also understanding how so many pharmaceutical companies use the compounds that are in these herbs as their active compounds for their medications that they sell. everyone and welcome to another episode of Carpe Diem Living the Podcast. I am your host Shane Gitmed and today we have a very very exciting episode something I've been waiting on <laughs> and we have Sheila who is a very important piece to my own healing journey which is why I can't wait for her to come on and share everything that I've learned from her and how she's changing lives daily and this is something I'm just so passionate about. So Sheila, take it away. Tell us about what you do and your company and just everything that Food Over Drugs is. Thank you, Shane. What an intro. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm Sheila and um, my background is in nutritional science. So I'm a nutritionist by trade and uh, I, I originally was studying to become a registered dietitian, but uh, started studying holistic nutrition in terms of like herbal medicine and detoxification as I was graduating. So uh, upon graduating, I became uh, a, what I call alternative nutritionist, which is like herbal medicine and functional foods and healing through food and then launch food over drugs, which is, as you know, um, it's an educational company. And I also like standing to educate people, but I also create herbal products that as you know, the parasite formula, whole body detox tea and custom blends, things like that, to support people in turning to food over drugs and getting them connected with themselves, connected to nature, and truly healing themselves. Because it was something that I knew that I, I couldn't do um, going down the path of becoming a registered dietitian. So um, that's that's my that's my goal, just helping people truly like take care of themselves and their bodies and connecting them back to themselves. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think what's really cool, like, first of all, the name is so catchy, food over drugs. And a lot of people, when they hear that, they're just like, oh my gosh, like they're automatically intrigued. And I remember the first time I heard about it through my friend Bella and I was just so fascinated. I was like, huh, you can treat all these different things with just a certain mixture of herbs. Like I, so I had to dive deep. So as a person that was, has been following your page, you know, doing the cleanses, I can attest that it's life changing. Like there's nothing better than healing the body naturally. And I've learned that through over the years. And even right now I'm doing the parasite cleanse. <laughs> so I know it's like really helpful. I put my family on, my dad is taking his for his gout. Like we're all <laughs> in this. So it's been really helpful. Let's talk about what got you wanting to do, um, like really learning about the herbs and the natural detoxifying process. Yeah. So I, okay. So when I was in school, um, I felt like I was hitting this roadblock with nutritional science. And obviously I, I loved it. I loved understanding the science of it and how food supports the body. But, um, I felt like there was no way out. There is nothing that is actually healing. And so as I'm studying and I'm going through these classes, I'm like, but how do we, how do we actually get this person out of the hospital? You know, cause that was my goal. My goal is like, how do we get them out and living their lives, lives again? Um, but I, I took this one course um, at my university um, and it was, it was, it was this whole program on an alternative nutrition, which is herbal medicine, essentially, and functional foods. And I remember when I was sitting in that class, our professor was Chinese, Dr. Tam. I'll never forget him. 
Um, and he, he got it. He got what I was saying. Cause at the time I was also studying like GMOs and, you know, understanding glyphosate. Remember this is like 2012. So this is like, you know, years before people, it became such common information for us to like talk about. Um, and he was, he studied like herbal medicine. And so when he was teaching us, it was like this light bulb went off and I was like, I was like, wait a minute, we could use pomegranate to support blood pressure. We could use turmeric to prevent Alzheimer's disease. We could use things like ginkgo biloba or go to cola to Im improve memory and cognitive function and, and circulation. We could use juniper berry for the kidney and singing nettle. And I, I'm starting to learn about these herbs, doing presentations on sage and turmeric. I love turmeric because I did a presentation on it. <laughs> and how these herbs can actually be used. And also understanding how so many pharmaceutical companies use the compounds that are in these herbs as their active compounds for their medications that they sell. So when I realized that, I was like, wait a minute, this is, this, these are the medicines that the humans of the earth have been using for thousands of years. And we've become so detached from that because I think what, what has been happening is we now rely on other people to tell us if we're healthy or not, what we should be doing, you know? And so when, when this, when this kind of came up and I started to, to, to make these connections and realize like, wait a minute, we have answers. Like this can actually support a person um, with diabetes, with whatnot, you know, all these different, different conditions. I wanted to learn more. I wanted to have that down. Initially it was like, I want to have this information so that when I'm proposing a diet for somebody that I know what foods to give them because I know what their condition is and I know how the foods, you know, do certain things like, you know, how blueberries increase circulation to the eyes. Like if they have something going on with their eyes, I know to tell them that, you know what I mean? Like that was where that, that kind of started. And in the years that I was, I was finishing up my degree and getting my um, uh, certification in alternative nutrition. So that was around the time that I was studying detoxification. And so with detoxification and herbal medicine, they work hand in hand. So when I continued studying detoxification, it was like this information was necessary to put them together and say, okay, how are we going to heal with detoxification and through food? And then how are we going to incorporate herbs to support the process and get things moving? And so with those two together, that's why I do what I do, where I combine the two in protocols and, you know, anything down the line and healing essentially. Right. And honestly, I mean, part of what I, where I learned most of my information from is your TikTok videos. Like when you posted about the blueberry, I was like, what? Like, all the different, I love when you break it down, like, oh, this fruit is for this, this herb is for this, because you you become amazed. Like, how did I not know that this one ingredient would help with all these other things? And you're just kind of like, why haven't we been doing this all along? And just like, I love that for you, where you're saying that, how do we get this patient out of the hospital versus, you know, a reoccurring patient? I think that's where there's a lot of power in that because there's many people that have been dealing with high blood pressure for how many years or people that have right. really bad diabetes. And for me, which I've had people ask me, how did you cure your allerg allergies? How did you improve through the cleanse I did with food over drugs? I kid you not. And I'll just touch on that really quick. Cause I don't think I I've mentioned it, um, go, went in depth with, about it, but basically what I did with Sheila and the other women that were part of that, um, that group, is we did a 10 day raw fruits and veggies diet and a cleanse. And I had people asking me like, how could you even do that? Like, aren't you like hungry all the time? Like, how are you like surviving right now? And I've never felt the most energy in my life other than when I did that cleanse. Like it was truly life changing. And from there, not only did like my skin conditions clear up cause I was still dealing with some eczema that was like some stubborn eczema that I was trying to get rid of once and for all. But not only that, but I saw that the things I used to be allergic to, I no longer react to. 
And I think the biggest takeaway from that experience with, you know, the supplements doing the whole body detox tea was that you mentioned that blueberries reduce histamine levels. And I was like, boom, mind blown. Like how in the world have I never known this this whole time? Like, cause you know, growing up, they tell you like, oh, you should eat fruits and veggies cause they're good for you. But I'm one of those people, like, unless I know like the full details of why it's good for me, I'm like, oh, okay. Now I know why, you know, like now I understand and I'll take it more serious. And I mean, if I wish I would have known, you know, about the whole blueberry thing many years ago. Maybe my histamine levels would have been resolved. But now yeah. thanks to the cleanse, I eat blueberries every day because I just don't even want to like go back to how it was. So yeah, no, yeah. I love that you do the breakdown. Um, so, oh my gosh. Okay. So with the, the different products you've created, um, what, I guess, so your favorite, the, your favorite product that you created was the tea, right? Like that's like your go-to or is it a different one? I want to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was okay. So the whole body detox, the whole body detox tea, um, in tea form because I now offer them in capsules, um, was the first product that I made, and I made it because I wanted to create this like all round um, something that you can take while you're either cleansing or you're not. And let's say you're just trying to simply boost your immune system, boost the functions of your body. It's a lymphatic stimulator. It supports your kidney and your bladder. It supports your digestive system. It, it supports your blood. Um, it supports your immune system, of course, um, but they're all tied together. And so I made this and I fell in love with it. And it's also super anti-inflammatory, by the way, for those that suffer from inflammation. Um, and it is my, like, my baby of a, of a tea. I love it. And so that's why, that's the tea that I use when I, when I, you know, conduct the, the guided cleanses. And so that's what you got a chance to, to taste too. It's quite earthy, but it's quite healing and easy enough to be drinking whether or not you're doing a cleanse or not. Um, but it's, it's, yeah, it's my favorite that one is my baby. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. Like I remember, I think the first, one of the first things I got from you, not just the tea was yeah, the parasite cleanse, because I recall the, the post that you did where it talks about if you experience this, this, and this, you may have parasites. Mm -hmm. Cause you said people usually have parasites if they have yeah. small children or pets. So let's, can we touch on that on like yeah. why parasite cleansing is so important? Yeah. I think hearing your explanation will make it more clear to our listeners. Yeah, totally. So first off the bat, um, so that, you know, those that are listening don't feel, uh, you know, like it's only limited to certain people. Most people have parasites and it's not like it's, it's nothing to be like traumatized or scared of like really most people have them. It's, and it's totally normal to get them. Cause it comes from literally anything. Like, like you said, small kids, like if you have a child, if you have a dog, literally like I have a dog and I'm sure <laughs> regardless of how many parasite cleanses that we do, like we're, we're going to be exposed to them all the time. Um, touching toilets, you know what I mean? Like public bathrooms, I mean, literally anything gardening. Um, but most predominantly they come from eating things like raw meat or like sushi or, you know, um, you know, so, so meats and fish is usually like the biggest culprit. So those people who like have like, um, raw fish or, you know, they eat a lot of meat are ones that typically are the ones that would have parasite issues. Now, I'll talk about the issues in a second. So the dangers of having parasites is that they, there's a couple, there's like a couple big th reasons why we don't want them in our bodies. So first, um, Parasites, they're, so they're, their poop, essentially, is a neurotoxin. And what that means is their waste. So as, as they're eating, and they're eating your food, and they're eating whatever is in your body, um, they, their waste is toxic to your nervous system. It starts to damage your nervous tissue. And so that alone is a big reason why we don't want parasites in our body. Now, the second reason, parasites, specifically worms, or but most parasites, 
are the decomposers of our Earth. So what that means is, if a, as we know what earthworms do, they will, you know, when we make compost, they eat dead material. So dead, you know, vegetation, dead even animals. They eat dead material and they turn it into fertilizer. So their purpose on this earth is to eat whatever is dying or decaying. So in your body, wherever you lack circulation, okay, or you retain waste, and this is why it's super important to consider detoxification, because detoxification is allowing for that waste, that stagnated waste, to be removed. Um, but wherever we have stagnated waste, let's say it's in our organs or it's in our tissue, whatnot, parasites leave the colon and start looking for decaying flesh material. So they can begin, you know, eating, essentially, your, your different organs, munching on that kind of tissue, and we don't want that because we want our organs, obviously, to be, you know, I think, I, think, I think that's the obvious. I mean, hearing that alone is kind of gross, but that's the truth. And so the, the, the major issues down the line is that um, they can start to consume your nervous tissue. And this is why a lot of people who... Um, you know, there's a lot of studies now that are coming out that parasites are being linked to um, MS. And so anytime somebody has any kind of nervous uh, disorder, I'll just say, always parasites is the first thing I say. First thing to rule out. Um, and then the second thing is other, other signs, by the way, that you could have parasites is you mentioned this before, which I'm so glad that you did the parasite cleanse. Um, allergies. Parasites can cause you to have allergies and they can cause you to have, um, they can cause you to grind your teeth that night because some, the ones that lay eggs, lay their eggs in the jaw muscles. I don't know why, but they do. And so, uh, so grinding your teeth, having allergies, having anxiety, these are signs of having parasites. And so when we start to see these signs come up, um, we get to cleanse. And cleansing you can do, you know, twice a year, once a year. You don't, it doesn't have to be something that you dedicate parasite cleansing as the same as, like, just overall detoxification. Because I recommend detoxification a couple times a year, generally speaking. Um, once you do it once, you'll know what I'm talking about. I'm sure you know at this point, like, how you feel and if you haven't felt like that in a long time, it's time to feel yourself again. Like, right. <laughs> not yeah. even on that note, but seriously. <laughs> no, I literally, so many people saw me, like, virtually, right? Because I like to have, like, FaceTime virtual dates with my friends. Like, oh, like, wine night, coffee night, and or coffee morning. And they would tell me, like, you look like you're glowing. And that was, that was during the time I did the 10-day. Because I remember part of my issue was, when I was doing that cleanse, I was still not sure about my allergies, right? Like where I stood, I was like, I don't know, like a lot of these food or fruits, I'm, I don't know if I can even have it right now. But then to my surprise, when I was slowly inching my way, I was like, oh my God, like it's fine. Like nothing's happening. Like it was almost like the, the light bulb that went off, like, oh my goodness, I found gold. That's what I felt like after learning from you, from other holistic um, professionals. I'm like, this is crazy. Like, I just wanted to like shout on the rooftops, like guys, like get on board because you don't have to live with all these crazy things. And I, that, now you, um, you jogged my memory on why I, I was so set on the parasite cleanse was the teeth grinding. So I actually, mm -hmm. so this goes back several years where I never used to grind my teeth. And then one day I was told like, hey, you've been grinding your teeth. And I was like, really? And so it got to a point where I had to see a dental specialist and then they gave me this massive, huge um, mouth guard. Mm -hmm. And I was like, really? And like, now I need to sleep with this. And so, and then it went away I, slightly, yeah. I think. And then it picked up again. So I just, I've had, yeah, this whole teeth grinding thing was just insane to me. And then once I, I did the parasite cleanse, I kid you not, stop teeth grinding. And I, I knew the difference because I didn't feel the tightness in the jaw. And like, cause I yeah. know, like when I wake up, I knew, I knew when I was grinding my teeth the night before. So 
yeah, I, and that's a lot of people. Like, that's a lot crazy. of people do it. Yeah. They just don't even know. <laughs> yeah. And you know, something else that you mentioned, you were talking about your allergies. Um, we got to start thinking, rethinking what allergies mean because I, I think there's so many people who feel like allergies are normal. And I get it. There's yeah. so many people in this world who have allergies. So it's, 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 it's common to think that way. But allergies is actually an abnormal response. So we think about some of these fruits and vegetables or even things like pollen that people become allergic to. These are natural earth created foods or sources. So the body shouldn't actually naturally reject these types of compounds, but when the immune system is off and it's confusing, it's confusing that fruit or vegetable or pollen or whatnot or environmental factor as an allergen, then it starts to overreact and it starts to treat it like it's a pathogen and release histamine and do everything else in the body to try and protect you from it. But when we start to cleanse the body essentially and we remove the things that might throw off the immune system, then the immune system starts to self-regulate itself and that's why you were starting to see the changes in your allergies, which I, I, I knew would happen and I remember we, we were talking one-on-one, -on -one, I was like, you know, this may happen, you know, at the beginning, this may happen, you know, midway through or after every, every body is different, but it can happen. So stick to it and you'll start to see as you start to introduce these foods again, you were like on day the two or three that you're like, hey, Sheila, by the way, I've been eating <laughs> all these foods again and I'm fine. I'm like, okay, just, just be careful. And you're like, no, 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 I'm good. And I'm just like... <laughs> I remember, like you, yeah. your, your body transformed so quickly and like you and but that's the timing for your body by the way there are yeah. other people who they may take them a couple days or a week maybe right. but when you know we get to start looking at allergies as like it's not a forever statement you, just right. because you were even you were born with it or you developed it at a young age like so many people believe that their conditions are for life and they're not. Your body has an ability to regenerate itself and change itself. A lot of us think, well, what I have is genetic. Well, absolutely. We have genetic weaknesses. And what that means is if my mother and my grandmother both have diabetes, okay, let's just say they have a pancreatic weakness. Their pancreas is weak. So... I may be born with a weak pancreas, but that doesn't mean that I will go on to develop diabetes. I could be the generation that heals the pancreas, allows it to self-generate itself, and then not pass on the weakness to my children. So we have an opportunity in this life to change our bodies and to regenerate ourselves so that we don't pass on the same genetic weaknesses because that's something that we have to remember we have an opportunity to change our dna and and and, and we ha and, and i think it's our obligation in this life as long as we know that that's possible as long as we believe that that's possible to do that for the future you know what i'm saying for the for the future of, the, of yes. humanity we, right. we get to take care of ourselves, not only for us, but for the future. Right. Yeah. No, see, and I feel your passion. That's why I'm just like, oh, like, this is why, like, anytime, like, I feel like I've been like, just like a sounding board now. Like anytime that anyone's telling me, oh, like my gut issues or my allergies instantly, I'm like, hey, like there's a solution for that. And many people in my yeah. circle knew that my diet was limited to like 10 things. A lot of people knew that. Um, during that time that I was really experiencing it. So now that they see, they're like, oh my God, she's able to have berries again. Oh, she's able to have like those greens again. And that's a thing. I think that's why, like at the very beginning of my journey, a lot of everything that I was being told by 
doctors, allergy specialists, didn't make sense because one of the biggest key things I was told by an allergy specialist was, so, you know, they do the blood test on you, right? And he was like, Mm -hmm. your blood levels are really high. It looks like you're allergic to everything, like the whole list of foods. And I like tick the box, tick the box or on which ones I was allergic to or which ones I ate. And he's like, yeah, it just seems like um, you've always been highly allergic and it just took time for it to react. Like it took time for it to show. So now the best way to deal with it is just to avoid eating them. Otherwise it's going to keep getting worse. And so that's, that was the, the reason why I like halted all things. I'm like, nope, okay, I'm just going to have to eat very plain, very simple because this is, it's not going to work. You know, I, I really didn't want the reactions. And I've, I know I've mentioned this before to, to people about my stories that I was so traumatized by food, like, and, you know, fruits and veggies are supposed to be the things that our bodies are like, how else did people survive back then? Right. Like through what came from the earth. And so that's why this whole situation like didn't make sense to me. And now, yeah, anytime anyone tells me anything about allergies, I'm like, don't you worry, like you don't have to live with it. And that's why I've always felt so called like to share this message and to share this information with other people. Because like you said, it doesn't have to be for life and you can change you, you can change now and for the future generations. And even me, like with my son, that's why I'm so like, and, <laughs> and I just realized the reason why in the beginning I was so scared of food, even for him is because I was told that if you're allergic, more than likely he's going to be allergic. So you have to be extra careful. So it was all this like walking on eggshells type of thing. And I hated it. I was like, well, he's a new baby. How is he going to get all of his nutrients and vitamins if he's not eating those things, you know? So it was, I, I had a really like scary um, relationship with food, but I'm glad I've overcome them. And with your help, with your knowledge that I feel like everyone on this planet needs to learn um, it. Yeah. Everyone's lives are just going to change for the better. Yeah. Thank you, by the way. And yeah, it's like, I think, I think a lot, like, you know, even you could have, you could pass on your your immune system abnormalities. You know what I mean, and that's that's okay. Ironically, though, like I, you know, I think I know that you're you were allergic to berries, um, and a big one is like is a certain nuts. And what's interesting is like uh, a lot of the foods, and 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 I won't I won't get into detail about peanuts, but one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that peanuts are actually nuts; they're legumes. And so they're they're already different from the rest. And so anytime I even say that, you know, if, if nuts and seeds are included in a, in a protocol, I always say avoid peanuts because peanuts are inflammatory. And so, you know, most people, whether they actually notice it or not, will have an inflammatory response. Some people's inflammatory responses are internal and they don't show up on the skin or in their eyes or in their nose, but it's happening internally. And there's other foods like, you know, certain... Uh, seafood and specifically I'll say like shellfish and you know in other words they're called bottom feeders you know bottom feeders if you really think about it um, they consume the waste of the ocean so all of the poop essentially they eat that and that's what makes up their bodies and so they're even in certain cultures they don't consume animals that consume the waste of an environment, right? So, like, um, you know, we won't eat, like, cockroaches, you know, or, like, or like there, even in Judaism, like, they don't eat – certain foods are not kosher because of the way that they – that, you know, how they live their lives. And so – but, you know, just commonly, like, around the world – we've made things like oysters like a delicacy or we've we consume lobster or crab or things like that and now we're seeing on so many like levels that like people are so allergic to them and their bodies are rejecting them it's not that your body is just rejecting fish or whatever if you notice they specifically reject bottom feeders mm-hmm. and and so when we are consuming the waste from the ocean of course we're gonna have a response we should be having a response because that's the waste that doesn't belong in the first place we are not to consume the waste of the ocean 
you know that is, there's a purpose for an animal that 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 lives at the bottom mm -hmm. to only to consume what's at the bottom we and i'll get on that on a more uh, philosophical way of talking about this we have hands to climb and we have arms to climb and hands to pick and we have color vision to see the ripening of fruit and we have a sense of smell that is attracted to ripen fruit and flowers. And the way that our anatomy is built, we already are, are shown to be meant to consume different types of foods, not the waste of a fish. You know what I mean? Things like that. That's, right. not, that's, not, that's not even what we're attracted to. Right. Um, and I think other people can get into uh, you know, the whole, like, are we supposed to be eating meat or are we not? In a personal opinion, I don't think we are all the time. Can we, are we allowed to once in a while? I think we can because we have survived. Do I believe it's ideal? Not necessarily. Right. But I think we were naturally frugivores. We were, we initially were eating fruit and that's why, in my opinion, we can digest fruit the easiest it is the mm. easiest thing for our bodies to get energy from fruit which is why some people are afraid of it because of the sugar but that's our brain food that's our body food so as you know when you were on a, a diet that was on high fruits and vegetables your energy was super high oh, which is what we get yeah. to pay attention to because how are these foods causing this reaction and these foods are making us break out uh, feel con feel dizzy, feel confused, have a, have swelling, um, you know, have a histamine release, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we get to look at those types of things and then begin to choose foods, by the way, that support us when we start to take note about how certain things make us feel. Right. And I feel like that's been my whole mission, especially as I feel like I'm learning more and more like with Chinese medicine and through herbs and detox, detox um, protocols, like all of that. I feel like they're all like part of the grand scheme and they're just layers of things that if you implement them, you're going to get the result that you're ultimately looking for. Because for me, I know there's not one way to heal. Of course not. There's not one way to, you know, to adjust, you know, what's going on with your body in general. So that's why I'm like, I'm going to just do them all. <laughs> and they're probably all going to do their thing, what they're meant to do. And it's going to work. And yeah, that's why I feel like the, the raw fruits and veggies cleanse was like the biggest like experiment on myself. That's how I felt. Cause I was like, let's see what the body is capable of, especially mine that has been through hell and back with all these different things from Western medicine, trial and error to, you know, the supplements they were giving me not working. It was just wild. That's why it took so long. Yeah. But now that I feel like I've unlocked the secret, <laughs> especially since it's worked on me, I'm like, if it can work on someone like myself that had all those, you know, issues going on, it, this could help everyone. Like there's just no way. And so that's why I'm, I'm so like, I'm so passionate about healing and just learning more about individual fruits and I love it because my, my parents have gone even more into it. Like when I first, I remember this specifically too, when my allergies were so bad, my dad actually was the one who said, it's your liver. And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, if your liver is having problems, that means it's not, if it's not functioning, functioning correctly, then if you're going to see like more allergies and um, what else did he say? He was just going on and on about it. And I remember at first I was like, ah, really? Like if it's a skin problem, it's a skin thing. Like that's kind of how we were trained to, you know, to believe um, with the different uh, information from our doctors. And so now like, and he, <laughs> what he told me was the way he helped his allergies too, was by drinking um, boiled, boiled garlic like he boiled garlic and then everything that seeped out, that's what he drank. Cause he said he was allergic to so many things before. Yeah. See, that's another method of cleansing. Yeah. There's so many, you mentioned this, you were like, there's so many different ways to heal and I'm all with it. There, there's like, I think it is our uh, responsibility in our life to choose to explore and strengthen the relationship with our bodies. 
And we do that through even like experiencing a massage. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's some people who've never gotten a massage before and it's, you know, for whatever reason, it's fine, you know, but the massage allows for the movement, you know, mm-hmm. it allows for the stretching of the muscle to relieve certain stagnation points. You know what I mean? And that's the tension that we feel. Um, there's so many different ways, even like now with the face and gua sha, you know what I mean? Like doing massages on the face, doing oil pulling for the teeth and doing lymphatic brushing or skin brushing, you know, which is lymphatic drainage essentially. And there's so many different things. And yes, I say yes, we get to do different things so that we can learn how our bodies respond and how we react and what works and what is our body asking for. You know, we, we really, you know, once we start to explore, like, like I said, you know, whenever I, I wrap up a, a, a cleanse, like a seven day cleanse or a 10 day cleanse, I say, this is how you know how you can feel. And so taking this information and applying it moving forward, you can now see what foods make you feel what ways, you know, what even not even what food because that's what I focus on the most but like what other things does meditating support you you know what are different things that you can do that can make you feel different ways so that ultimately you can become your own guide in this life because like I said at the beginning we have lost touch with ourselves and we have now began to rely on other people to tell us what's wrong with us, and then what to do. And if we can have that control again over ourselves and that power again over ourselves to be able to dictate this is what's wrong and this is what I get to do on my own, that's the information for life. And that's what's going to make that, what's going to make or break us in the end, you know? Right. Being our own our own guide, you know, I, I would say this sometimes like our own doctor, but really it's our own guide because it's, mm-hmm. it's further than just a doctor. It's like, you know, can we, can we, do we have the answers for ourselves? Do we have the knowledge and the experience for ourselves. Right. You know, that's the most important part. Absolutely. And you know what? It's so funny. So of course I have a lot of your products in my home and I was told the other day, they're like, gosh, you look like you have your own herb shop. And I was like, what are you talking about? And it's because <laughs> I have a whole cabinet of like different um, products I've gone from you, like the tea, the chaga chai, the, um, the custom formula you made for me for my nerve, for my nerves. And so yeah. I just, and I love it. I'm just like, yes, I hope. And I'm leading by example that if you just take the proper steps and really give your body what it needs, then it's, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's just one day at a time. And you know, you just have to stick it through because I know there's people that unless they're noticing the change instantly, then they're kind of like, Oh, this isn't working or like whatever. And I'm just like, no, like I, I promise you, if you just take the time, have the patience, you know, like this is your, your life. Like, so you just have to keep going. Like you have no other choice. Otherwise you're going to have more problems later. So I know. And that's why like, Oh, my dad wanted me to thank you personally about his gout, um, formula because he's been oh. suffering from gout for like, I don't How's even know. Doing? So good. I remember when, um, when I first got it for him, he had just been dealing with like, I I call it a flare up, but it's when he literally could not even walk at all. And then when I gave it to him, I was like, okay, this is, um, this is what you need to do that you have to take one a day, or I think it's two times a day. And now like, it's like, it keeps him at bay. Like he hasn't had an issue since. So that's why it's just like, see, this stuff works. And now he won't take anything else, like anything else that he's been told in the past or like someone telling him, oh, you just have to deal with it. Just be off your leg for a week. It's like, no, no, no. Like now we really see the power of herbs. So thank you for that. Like it's been really helpful. Of course. Of course. Oh, that's so, it's so amazing. Like that's, those see these are the stories that like that that keep this going you know what i mean it's like and i'm so glad that you shared that because so many people and it's you mentioned this actually i'll I'll just say this like so many people believe that like even food um or herbs are, are to be used like pharmaceuticals 
and they're not, you know, like they're not, they're not the same. Of course they can perform functions that are similar, but you know, when we look at pharmaceuticals and how they can create an immediate reaction in the body uh, within minutes, literally, you know, you got to really think about that. Like, and I, I'll just say this, like, that's not healthy. You know what I mean? To, to have a compound or maybe a pill this small, be able to send your entire body through something within minutes or an hour or whatnot, you know what I mean? Or a day, you know, there's so many drugs out there that do that. And that's not natural, you know? Now, healing process is natural, you know? Healing from a wound overnight, you know, that happens. Um, feeling better the next day if you get a good night's sleep, if you're not feeling well, that happens. But herbal medicine is not the same. So, so, so a lot of times people will wonder, like, well, how many days do I have to take this in order to start to feel it? I never have an answer because your body is your body, and I can't tell you when your body will kick into gear and start to change, but it will. And so if you think about how we have this perception we believe that anything that's in a pill form should act quickly. But you talk about losing weight or gaining muscle or tr changing your body, and everybody says simultaneously, well, you know, you need 30 days to start a habit, or you need 21 days to start a habit. Right. Well, if that's the case, and your body requires 21 days or 30 days or whatever it is, then that's how you get to look at your body when it comes to the healing process. Right. You know, like if you can put, if you can put that timeline on something like cha transforming your body in terms of the physical and of weight loss or weight gain, whatever it is, then believe that is, is, is the, is the pace of your own body when it comes to healing and reversal and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, you know, cause, cause it does take time. And as long as we're going to do it in a healthy way, we have to give our body the time to like naturally transform itself because that takes time. It's not supposed right. to happen overnight. Right. You know? And I, yeah, totally. And I think for me, I think the reason why my bounce back was so pretty quick, like it shocked me. I was like, really, this is nothing's happening as far as like allergic reaction is because my body has been deprived of it for so long. I feel like when I did you know, eat the mm -hmm. fruits and veggies that I was, I stayed away from for so many years because I didn't want the allergic reaction. It was kind of like, Oh, thank God. You know, we've been waiting for this. You know what I mean? Like having like natural fuel. I think that's why for me, the healing process was not only like shocking, shockingly quick, but also because I stuck with it. I didn't give up. I kept thinking positive thoughts of this is going to work because I'm putting the effort and the time and, you know, the mindfulness behind it. And I told myself too, I was like, once I do this cleanse, not only was I already living as holistic as possible, but I'm going to take it up a notch. You know what I mean? Like really, you know, implement more like healthier meals now that I can expand my palate again. And I really take all the knowledge I've learned, you know, from all the different experts in the holistic world um, and just applying it day in and day out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, especially because I know, like, I know like how, how well it works to all my family and friends. I'm just like, boom, I'm right there. I'm like, if you, oh, you have this, this is what you should take. And like, I mean, I'm no doctor, but just from my own yeah. experience, I see the result. So of course I'm going to recommend it. Um, so yeah, the only, <laughs> the only thing with, with Dylan, because he's so picky, because I, the, one of the first products I got from you was the, the child's, um, the children's parasite cleanse. So I'm working on it, getting him to take it more. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see if he expands on that a little bit more. I'll probably put in some like chocolate almond milk or something. He'll probably take it fine. <laughs> yeah. You can do something like that. Like you can add it to like, you know, you could add some more cacao powder. You can put almond milk. You can make a little smoothie. You can make a little ice cream. You can make, it's just the thing is that like, because in order for it to work, it has to have this like kind of like a pungentness to it. Right, right. Um, Adding the cacao to be able to like make it feel like it's maybe chocolate, it's just a new kind of chocolate, you know? Um, and, you know, adding some honey as sweetener, things like that. Like you can kind of, you know, you can add it to applesauce or whatever, oh. whatever works, 
you know, for, for them to, to enjoy. It's, I, I get it. It's not like the easiest, you know, thing, but you just start with something really tiny and kind of can build your way up and get them even familiar with the taste or even like the slight taste. And, you know, as we know, I've, over time of, of, you know, as adults, like our flavor profiles can change. So as they do too, you just introduce a little bit of time and then they're like, hmm, okay, this doesn't bother me anymore. I can, I can, and then we decided to just go up a little bit more. Right, you know? right. Yeah, but that's definitely what I have to do is just sprinkle it in here and there. <laughs> yeah, but oh my gosh. Yep. Oh, like I feel like this, there's just so much more like I, I could read about and hear about with regarding like herbs and everything. I literally want to compile like a list of like, okay, this fruit has like, just kind of like how your TikTok videos are like so informational. I kind of want my own little guide, like paper guide of where I can just look at <laughs> for that because anytime like I just like to look things up all the time like I might as well just like compile like a google doc with all this information um but yeah this has been such a chat yeah like this I'm telling you like I I cannot wait to start my garden like that's one thing I've really been waiting on doing until I'm in a spot where I can do that and so that's that's gonna be awesome because I remember recently you were talking about on Instagram how we should be growing our own food and saving the seeds because at some point we're going to, you know, we need to be able to have our own source of like clean yep. food. So that is Absolutely. a great point. Absolutely. Yes. We have to, I mean, it's, it's, if we look at our food system right now and it's like, it's already getting to this point where we have to start looking like, is this organic? Where was this grown? Are there any pesticides on it? Like we're going to farmer's markets because we trust them more. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's already all these rising questions and, and so many things that we don't know yet about our food and it's only getting worse, you know? And, and, it, and especially when it comes to like prepackaged food or processed foods, like they don't use the best. They use, they, have, they, have, they, a lot of times they use, they actually use the worst because yeah. it's, it's hanging in all these other flavors. And so we are then consuming those chemicals and aside from that i mean talk about like the the prices too like in order to survive we have to start growing our own food we have to take control over the food our own at least you know taking care of ourselves in that sense like and and by the way like freshly homegrown food is so much tastier <laughs> because the nutrients, told me, yeah. uh-huh. the nutrients has had time. I mean, even like, let's talk about like the lycopene, what makes tomatoes red. It's an antioxidant. Um, the lycopene in tomatoes, like when we grow it ourselves, we give our tomatoes time for the lycopene to develop and then we can taste what a real tomato tastes like. But the grocery store, they'll pick them when they're like not even ripe yet. And they're pale colored because they're genetically modified and they tried to grow it faster than it naturally would grow. And they're depleted of nutrients because their soil is terrible. You know, look, they don't, there's, there's no care. It's mostly like it's a, it's, a, it's a profit thing, you know. And so we just, there's so many reasons why we get to grow our own food. And starting small is okay. Starting on your windowsill, your balcony is okay. Right now, you know, I grow things on my balcony. And it doesn't matter where you start. Like you can just begin practicing sprouting seeds, you know, just to become familiar with what types of seeds sprout and how to take care of them just on that note. And Hey, if it gets too big, give it to a friend to take care of, you know what I mean? Or, right. you know, it's just, you, things like that. Like you can, we can do things like that. It, it doesn't have to be like your full responsibility and you can't, you need, you need a whole thing to get started. Like you could really start super, super small, you know? Yeah. That's totally so, my goal is start awesome. small. Yeah. Cause that, that's like what yeah. my parents did. Like they started off with a couple things and now their whole backyard is like filled with stuff. So I'm like, ah, can't wait to do that. And just like learn. Yeah. And, that's how it's it's, <laughs> yeah. and then, and then you feel so proud of it. Cause you're like, Oh my gosh, I did that. You know, like from my, you know, just putting the intention there and really like cultivating it. Like that would just make me so happy. I already know. I mean, the first thing I want to learn is make is growing some blueberries because that is like my number one right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that. And I love that you, you've watched the, the TikTok videos too. Oh, um, I totally binged <laughs> it. Yeah. I was like, what's next? Okay. Taking notes. What's next? 
Yeah, I get to post more on there. Yeah. No, for <laughs> like, sure. My goal with that was exactly what you experienced. My goal was like, let's take common foods and teach people what they could be used for, you know? Because we have to have this information, you know what I mean? Like, knowing that is so valuable, even to you. Like, you you knowing that is like, oh, wow. Like, I'm glad I know that, you know? And we can use it now. You know, garlic was another one that, that you know, you mentioned that your dad was using. And to understand how garlic supports the body. Like, this is information that, like, is, is so easy to grasp. And it is, there are about foods that are so common. Exactly. You know, for the most part. Exactly. So that's, 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 that's why I intend to, you know, to create videos. Like, so I want people yeah. to, to, to have those aha moments like you did. And yeah. be like, oh, I didn't know that. You know, like, learn yeah. something new. <laughs> yeah, please <laughs> keep making more. Seriously, like, there's, I know there's so much more out there that people would just be like, oh my gosh, I have no idea. So keep them coming. Like, it's, it's been so helpful. Yeah. I'm sure there's so many listeners out there that probably have a million questions for you because they're, they're just going to want to know about everything that you do, especially when it comes to herbs and, you know, learning the different properties of foods, healing properties of foods. So tell us, tell our listeners on where they can find you on, you know, Instagram, TikTok, your site. Yeah. Yeah. Well, luckily it's all in the same name. So food over drugs is the company name it's my instagram name it's my tiktok name where you can find those cool videos that we were talking about foodoverdrugs.com is the website where you can order custom formulas you can order the parasite formula that we talked about you can order the whole body detox tea um that i mentioned and so yeah so food over drugs that's 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 where you can find me I'm, I'm, I, I hope I, I hope to be connected with with some of you guys that are that are watching this even just to say hi um, and then you watched it. So feel free to reach out. Yeah, definitely. And yeah. Sheila posts a lot of cool Instagram <laughs> videos as well. Yeah. So thank you. so. Yeah. Much. <laughs> this has been so awesome. And I can't wait for more people's lives to change once they try the different guided cleanses you do and the, the products. I could rave about it forever. So thank you again. And we'll catch you all next time. Bye.